Today on the Retro Zoo Super Show, we face down the war machines of General Balsaga. Live from Kakariko Village. This is the Retro Zoo Super Show, and I am one of your hosts, Kai. And I'm Steven. Steven, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Doing well. So, we are doing a topic that you care about, which is exciting. I am excited. So, I'm hoping to kind of waste a bunch of time. Not talking about it? (laughs) Not talking about it, like we (laughs) normally do. No, no, we're going to get into this, because um, while, while... During this broader series, we will almost certainly have to talk about a game that you enjoy, that you have brought up on multiple occasions. That's, that's why I'm excited that we're we're starting into this particular genre, actually. Can- Candy Crush. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be. You've uh. lied to me again. So, yeah, um, uh, but before we start, you know, as always, we are produced by Drum. Drum, how are you doing? I am functioning normally. That is really good news. <laughs> that a boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, a little, little bit of housekeeping getting out of the way is that um, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're going to have an announcement at the end of the episode. We're not going to put it up front for those of you who are here for the topic um, uh, about uh, about the future of the show and where we are going for from here. And there are going to be a few changes. And so we do hope that you'll stick around and uh, and listen to that. Um, <clears throat> in uh, in the meantime, though, what the, we are going to kind of kind of do more a broader topic um, on a particular genre of game. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's mobile puzzle games. Mobile puzzle games. That is not <laughs> what we discussed either. Candy <laughs> Crush, mobile puzzle games. No, yeah. This is, this so what what, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk about the infamous RTS, aka real time strategy, aka best style of gameplay uh, ever created, aka the style that also is. Looking to be in its death throes, unfortunately. Currently. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't know if I told. I did tell you. I, I read this article recently about. Oh, you this- like you I- sent me like not even joking. You sent me like two articles and a very long YouTube video in about a five minute period of time. And <laughs> I did not get to little, all of that. I'm sorry to say this. Um, I'm a little bipolar. And so, <laughs> when I get excited about something, that's way too excited, and it's the the bi part. And then, um, I guess the polar part is the you know sometimes I get sad, or I, I don't know how that those diseases work. But anyway, I get really excited about topics sometimes. And um, I was on, a, I was just, I'm, you know, I, I think I've also told you this because there's probably one of the links that I sent you, but I'm planning on going to to DreamHack. In Dallas, 
Um, I think I'm going to travel through an Ethernet cable to try to maybe get to a router somehow to travel there because <laughs> since I am a ethereal being stuck inside a Super Nintendo, <laughs> I might try to possess an avatar. Um, I, I haven't think worked that out yet. Ethereal is the right term. I, Metatherial? I don't know. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not pretty sure it's just that. electronic. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just a bunch of protons and neutrons and neutrinos um, dancing around the Heisenberg compensator. Um <laughs> but basically I want to get to this dream hack uh, in Dallas. And I found out recently that uh, um, in one of the articles I sent to you was, was discussion about, uh, I guess Blizzard has handed over the reins for their esport wing to ESL, which famously does counter-strike and it's a, it's a e-sport circuit that has yeah. many different titles under its belt, but they are also teaming up with DreamHack. So uh, the StarCraft circuit has entered in StarCraft, StarCraft, StarCraft. Three, three year contract with, yeah, it's exciting <laughs> with uh, ESL and DreamHack. And so and I found out that uh, Dallas will host um, the first American uh, version of this and you know, as you know, as the listener may know, I've been visiting DreamHacks. Um, I missed this last year, but I've been going to them ever since they came to the States uh, a few years ago. And so they're really great uh, conventions. It's a, it's a big giant land party. But anyway, there, there will be some professional StarCraft going on there in a, in the, in a circuit format. And with a with a prize pool, of I, I believe the prize pools have increased. So... I think the first place winner takes like 50 G's or something. So it's a, it's a notable tournament and it's also exciting for Starcraft in that, you know, uh, as I opened with this, the, there's been a lot of chat chatter about uh, real time strategy being dead. And hmm. it's interesting because, and I guess this ties into our topic a little bit because, you know, real time strategies have a very long history and, and the game we're talking about today is, you know, seems to be one of the first, uh, in that beautiful uh, chain of events, but but there was a lot of diversity in the real time strategy world. Um, we saw that in, in uh, Command and Conquer and Warcraft and and some of these you know these titles that pretty much everybody who's gamed at all knows about. Yeah, um, you know, uh, culminating really, and this is the weird, sad part, is culminating really in StarCraft and StarCraft Two. Well, ultimately, in StarCraft Two, there really hasn't been a lot. Uh, of other RTSs that have been successful because it's kind of one of those genres where you you do a good job of it and you don't really need others. Uh, There's just, or either that or there hasn't been a lot of people haven't focused on them because other genres have come up and have become more popular or have just overshadowed them in general, like the the first person shooter and, and actually the MOBA, I think is probably the death of the RTS because originally the MOBA was a custom scenario in starcraft or warcraft 3 i can't remember where they basically it was you know castle defense or whatever tower defense you know where you're running lanes and basically that's what all mobas are now yeah. is lane running um real-time strategy games with with teammates and so it's i basically played a form of that when i used to play custom games in starcraft the original starcraft but but now the mobas have just because i think of the cooperative play and there's it's less skill-based um, there's not as many moves per minute and there's just the strategy is still there but it's very cooperative whereas traditionally real time strategies have been like chess like one versus one and I think that's why Starcraft is it really has kind of carved its place as probably the premier one versus one real time strategy game if not the most premier one versus one game in general because that's what strategy games lend themselves to is one versus one uh but and and so that's very appealing to me still but i think players in general are moving towards like cooperative play except i guess in the case of the survival games uh which are first person shooters like team fortress and you know battlefield you know PUBG or whatever so where it's kind of back to one versus one but it's a totally different style of play it's you know all first person shooting but I don't know. There's something really inspiring to me about uh, real-time strategy games, but it's it's like where does the genre going? Like we haven't seen a lot of development in it. There, I, this this article I sent you was a PC gamer article um, where the guy he's definitely you could tell he's not a, really an esports player. He's more of a campaign player, and he's interested in, in that aspect of it, which I think a lot of people are. You know, they don't, especially if we're talking about retro games. Most retro gamers were single players. You know, so it's mm-hmm, uh, right. You know, so you're not getting a lot of that kind of intrigue 
Um, and this guy seems like the article that was written was kind of coming from a perspective of this guy isn't out there uh, doing a lot of competitive play, which is which is cool because I think that's how retro, uh, uh, real-time shatter you started was just this at home playing the campaigns, and that was the meat of the game until really StarCraft, which introduced this whole other aspect. I think StarCraft was one of the ones that blew it up of the the multiplayer aspect and uh, and bringing it online and actually creating it into one of the first successful esports. Anyway, right, yeah. so this, but this all had a, this all had an origin. This all these games have an origin story, and it's it's. I think it's important that we talk about it not just from the retro gaming aspect, but for like as a, a message to the future. Like, hey, let's not lose this beautiful genre. Like, what is the beauty of this genre? Like, what how how is it being lost, and how can we reclaim it? How can we inspire people? And I, and I, you know, it makes sense to talk about the roots. You know, where where right. where, mm-hmm. where did this come from? And so that is going to be uh, that's going to be our topic for today is her Herzog Zwei, 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 Zwei. <laughs> okay, Zwei. I'll go with Zwei. Did you click <laughs> the little stare at you. microphone button? <laughs> <laughs> I actually asked. Zwei. I actually asked our our um, <laughs> uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours who, um, who knows some German and. Um, he was uh, he was very confused by all of it, and I'm like, "Look, the English in the game is not that good either, <laughs> much less the German." Um, so we're depending on a Japanese person uh, writing German. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it seems like it. Um, so you know, the title of it is actually is actually pretty witty because it, it took me a while to figure out that this is actually a sequel uh, to a game. Oh man. Um, because, you know, uh, no one knows what, you know, unless you speak German or look it up, uh, what her, Herzog's why means. And, um, and so, uh, you know, the, uh, what we're, we're kind of getting to the importance of this game, um, uh, eventually, but, but it's, uh, I, I want to bring up, I want to bring up his original game because this was like, uh, this was, uh, uh, Herzog was, uh, an MSX game from 88 and it was, it was a, it was a real time tactical game. And so, you know, like there, there, there were a lot of real time games going on, obviously, you know, since the dawn of computer games, there's like these real time games, but, and there's a lot of real time tactics games. And what what do you mean by real time? Like, how do we even define that as, uh, as, as, as opposed to turn based, as opposed to turn based. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. And, uh, and so I wanted to bring up. Uh, Herzog, um, which is uh, uh, German for uh, like like a duke, and okay. because th- these these are like these are like science fiction games, and I so like there's in the plot of the game, and like they, they like they like do like a whole bunch of setup for these plots for a game that has no plot, and it's the same thing with Herzog's Y. Um, <laughs> In this game, it's like this, uh, this, the, uh, so this, this character named President Hughes of the Republic of Mercies is assassinated, and yeah. the Ruth Liberation Army, um, which is a terrorist organization that takes responsibility, and, um, and so, like, there's this war that breaks out between Mercies and Ruth. I, I don't know why they called this Liberation Army Ruth. Uh, the the leader is not Ruth. The leader is Roger Tense. Um, oh. But <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe, like these maybe, evil maybe this evil point. group of people. Ruth. I <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they meant to put Ruthless, and that just didn't fit into some of the, the I, you know dialogue actually, boxes. Actually, that's not a bad theory at all. Um, <laughs> so uh, so so yeah. Okay. So this comes out, and so it comes time for the sequel, and. Herzog Zwei, Zwei is uh, German for two. So this is just Duke two. Um, but the, uh, the, the game, the game comes up with this like ridiculous reason that is called this. Um, and it's part of like the backstory. Like this, this game has two pages of backstory again for a game that has zero plot <laughs> in it. <laughs> the whole so all right so now we're in the aria republic 
and it and it was free. It's a, this free pl- planet, whatever. But the military commanders like uh, decided to, to take over, and um, ne- so this one commander, Herzog Eins, uh, or su- or you know Supreme Commander One, or Duke One. It, it takes over, and um, one of his generals, Ludwig, is, is your character, and like Ludwig is like like sitting there like fondly remembering the freedom of the old ways, yeah. and he's like, "Screw this, I'm gonna take it over," and um, and so he like gathers an ar- you know a- an army and starts in and so he is now going up against General Balsaga who is the leader of Balsaga Herzog Vinegar. Right. <laughs> He's the leader of Herzog Ein's forces mm. and uh and he's been ordered to you know go take out these 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 pesky pesky rebels. And so that sets up the the battlefield and so this is this is where <laughs> <laughs> this is where the dumbest explanation of this title comes in ever. Uh, at the end of the like the backstory part, it says, uh, Only one high commander can succeed. Will it be you? Can you overpower the enemy? Can you save the world? Can you become Supreme Commander 2? Herzog Zwei? <laughs> it's like, why would you call yourself that? <laughs> Supreme, Supreme Commander number two. Right. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> in, in like, like all of the, all of like the leaders of this, of this, <laughs> this nation are going to just start numbering themselves. You know? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm 11. Yes. Yes. You can oh, call you me. know, okay. Herzog 11. But, you know, that just shows the strength of a dynasty if you have like the 11th or the 12th or the 13th or the 14th. But it's not, it's just a title and a number. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like it's not even like Herzog Bob Zwei, right? Well, I, I don't know. I'm actually kind of I'm understanding it. I feel like I mean, look, it's simple. It's straightforward. It's almost too simple. But if you're going to try to communicate a story through a parallel universe, I mean, this this happened in another universe. This whole story, it's like it's catchy. And we're going to remember it because of its simplicity. I mean, we're talking about it. So I, 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 don't, I don't know. That, that might be a little far-fetched. But, but I mean, I believe in an infinite number of alternate realities. And as soon as you <laughs> mention so, a backstory, like, this is one that I'll remember. Herzog's why. I want to – this is how he transmitted his story. Right. Across gosh. dimensions. <laughs> okay. Well, this came out on Genesis <laughs> in, uh, in Japan in uh, late – 89 in uh in North America in, uh in 1990 and also in Europe in 1990 and it didn't uh it didn't actually sell uh remarkably well it I it why. um it it wasn't <laughs> well it is it wasn't marketed very well and um uh it 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 just you know it did, it didn't sell it didn't sell very well um when it first came out, uh, Electronic Gaming gave it four stars out of ten. <laughs> Ouch! And, um, uh, That's a it, failing grade. Yeah, and I, you know, and this 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 happens especially in North America. I I, I feel like um, when when things that are new and and actually revolutionary come out i i don't think that we are very quick to recognize it i believe this i think it's actually a fundamental characteristic of human nature yeah yeah and um what was i what was i looking at the other day um it was oh now i'm gonna blank on the on, it was a movie that um the, you know is 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 remembered as just this just incredibly great and important film and it like like the the, the big Lebowski. Uh, <laughs> uh the, the the critics hated it you know originally and now everybody you know now the critics are like oh i see what it was you know but um 
it, you know, it's, 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 it's like one of these things. It's like we, we could not see at the moment that this was, this was the birth of something and that this would go on to influence some of the greatest games has ever been made. And, um, I, I got, I, I got, so I, I hadn't even heard of this game, but I got to play it some. And, uh, I got just destroyed in this game. Like this was like a really hard game. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was playing game A. So like, like what, what, what you do is you, p- you actually pick your map. You can pick whatever map we want to start on. Uh, and, and you just kind of whittle away at the map, but then you choose game A, B, C, or D. And I was getting just crushed, um, uh, in game A. And I was like, I was reading the, the instruction manual, but the instruction manual is not really all that helpful. It, it's just, it, a lot of it is just, um, I just, just playing it and learning. I was like, oh, okay, no, that was the wrong move. And oh, okay, I see what you need to do here. And, um, I, I was also playing it with, with my style of RTSs, which is always the wrong way. Um, very, very defensively. Yeah. And in this game, that is definitely the wrong way. You cannot play defense on this game. You have to be pressing all the time. And so the computer was just destroying me. And I was looking it up. I'm like, okay, if there's some kind of difficulty setting, I'll look. It's like there is – there actually is a difficulty setting. And it's that game A, B, C, or D thing. A was the easy one. Oh, Okay. And I was just, I was getting demolished. Um, and, uh, and so I, <laughs> I watched some videos of these people who were just owning the game. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I see what's going on. And then I went back and I did my, I lost again, but I did much better. Um, and, uh, this also has the distinction you were mentioning multiplayer on, on RTSs. This is multi, this is a multi, I mean, it's not over the internet, but it's a two player game. It's really? split, split screen RTS. Oh, wow. Which is really, really, it's, I, I watched some gameplay of it. It's really cool. Um, and so there, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in this game. And when we get back to, from the break, we're going to, uh, we're going to, delve a little bit into it. But but before we go to the break, I, I um, this isn't the announcement about this show, but this is the announcement about a show that's coming up. Because over the break, I want to play uh, the the song that we did for a a new show coming out that's both audio and visual. And, yes. Um, and so we're going to play the theme song over the break. But <clears> – <throat> Really, really quickly, um, we, we with, uh, with our friends have been playing and recording a, um, a, uh, a game of, uh, a role playing game, you know, tabletop role playing game of, uh, Star Wars Edge of the, uh, Edge of the Empire. Um, and we've been having a blast with it. We have been recording it. And so we're putting Super those fun. together in audio form. And so they're going to be coming, uh, the, 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 the podcast version is going to be launched in the next few weeks. And I'll keep you updated on that. But this weekend, if you were listening to this, when this comes out this weekend on Sunday night, we're actually going to stream uh one uh, uh uh one of our one of our adventures and we're going to keep we're going to keep uh doing it both on the Twitch channel at twitch.com slash technofunkboy. And also we're going to start putting them out in the podcast form. And so, um, please head over to twitch.com slash technofunkboy and, uh, and subscribe. That way you can be notified, um, when we're going live. Um, we've been having an absolute blast with this game. I, 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 I think it's darn right hilarious. Um, it is, it is definitely, it, it's definitely more of a, um, humorous game than a serious game <laughs> yeah no and, and and i i uh it's amazing i i don't know what else to say <laughs> like is i'm a player in it and uh kai is uh the keeper or the dm or whatever it's called in this game <laughs> wait you've been playing you've been playing uh call of cthulhu way too much for to yeah. call it the keeper <laughs> the keeper and uh it's just been a blast you know my my brother plays in it and it's and a good good friends of ours play in it that uh, rave, are, rave, uh rave 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 is playing in it. yeah yeah so um, it's just in it's it's an all-star cast i believe and we we all have good chemistry and man 
I'm excited about it. I haven't listened to the to the edited version, the podcast version yet, but I'm that's what I'm going to do first thing tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So let's jump over to break so we don't take too long with it. But check out Perfect. the song. I uh, I think I, I have a lot of fun. Um, I think the song was really. It's fun. an awesome song. So uh, all right, we will be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, okay, so uh, there was, was one thing that I was reading that uh, that I thought was very interesting. And when I was playing it on Twitch tonight, uh, the game on Twitch tonight, Rave actually brought this up too. That this looks looks as much to be like a MOBA than it is an RTS. Well, m- and, MOBAs and, and RTSs the- are very similar right I yes mean, um but a, a mobile is a more focused or yes rts it, it's like it cuts out part of the what real-time strategy generally have some of the some of the components like resource management and stuff like that and gets more to the fighting and to the action right and this game really is like a blend of the two um hmm. so like like in the with the real-time strategy games that we we think of it's like we are you know, we, we, we are looking over the board, moving all the pieces. Um, but with, um, uh, with Herzog Zwei, you, you are playing a character in this game and your character can be, a, can play as a jet and can also land and turn into like a giant mech robot and it can fire guns and stuff like that. <clears throat> That's, I just have to say real quick. Mm-hmm. Starcraft definitely utilized, like, paid homage to that with the Viking, a unit that is a jet that can turn into a mech. Oh, nice! <laughs> so, That's awesome. Which is, also comes from, uh, I guess, uh, what's the other? What's the anime where they use the macros or um, macross is a a variable fighter? I guess is what it's called. Mm. Yeah, like a transformer. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, this thing is like, uh, it, it's so you can, you know, you can you can land and you can take out, you know, the enemy uh, stuff and um, and try to shoot down, you know, shoot down the other. The other player also has one of these things, but you also have to manage your army, and so you use your limited resource in this is is money. Now you don't you don't go and like mine for gold or anything like that. Uh, it's it's like a it's it's a timer increase of 
uh, of money. And so you have to use this to build different units. It then, but then it, like you have to give a mission to your unit. So to, uh, you have your base and there are also a bunch of neutral bases and you can go capture those neutral bases. And to do that, you have to send four, four of your soldiers inside of one, but then you have to give that soldier a mission. It's like, okay, you're going to, I'm creating a soldier and I'm in you. I want you to go occupy a base and then it will, it will run on a timer to, to create that soldier in your jet form, you can pick up the soldier and drop him wherever he wants to. And then wherever you drop him, he is going to try to accomplish his mission. So you can say, I want you to go after neutral and unoccupied bases. I want you to go after the enemy base. I want you to go back uh, against the enemy main base. I want you to like patrol this area or whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, and so – and so you're you're constantly trying to set up defenses while pushing forward and getting these bases. Now the bases are really important because your jet has limited fuel and you refuel by hovering over the base. And but so like you uh, uh like like on the biggest map, you cannot get across the map uh without refueling. Yeah, I just I watched uh, some gameplay of a guy trying to fly across them and, and it was the first time he played it and he couldn't figure out why his little jet was it kept exploding and returning to base <laughs> right kept, yeah yeah exactly yeah so you have to refuel every time you go back <laughs> right and uh so you can you can do you can make little soldier guys you can make uh tanks you can make supply trucks because your your tanks and your men will run out of ammo and so you can you can resupply them uh, I never had that problem because all of my characters died before they ran out of ammo, <laughs> which is great. Um, you can also do like the, the surface to air, uh, um, vehicles, or you can do stationary missiles, which are really good against the enemy character. And, um, and so it, those are really expensive, but if you can get those set up defensively, then, the enemy character can't get there and the enemy character is is like is is really really dangerous you know you as a character you can't put you can't uh cause damage to the base directly but you can wipe out enemy units fairly quickly and so if you can swoop in and kind of clear a path for your tanks to go in that's that's really you know that's a really good thing and um Meanwhile, all of this is happening very, very quickly. You know, it's like I, I started playing um, uh, Galactic Battlegrounds, a Star Wars game, and, and we're, we're going to play together for a future episode of this series. Yes. And um, and it's like every everything goes very slow. You know, they, these characters move very slowly. Right. In this game, everything is so fast and you have to react. You know, you have to be you have to be creating something you have to be doing something with your character and you have to be keeping an eye on on the enemy all at the same time and they will just pop you know it's like the enemy like when you're off into a corner the enemy will just start dropping tanks right in front of your base and all of a sudden you get an alarm and you're hauling over there trying to uh, trying to keep up it is very very quick uh, quick uh, game that that's uh, well, what, one of the things I struggled with was just how fast this thing goes uh, and I don't mean like time wise I mean like a match can last a while uh, you know it can yeah. last um, like uh, in, I was streaming for an hour and I did three matches so and I lost very quickly <laughs> So they were running about 20 minutes each. Um, wow. And one, one dude I watched um, played the entire game. And it took him six hours for, you know, for, 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 for an action game like in this era, six hours of gameplay it, when you know what you're doing and you win every time is incredibly long game. Yeah. So you uh, played for six hours. Right. To, to get through the entire game, to beat all of the matches. Oh wow! Um, and so this this is it's a huge huge game um, uh, for you know for the for 
for this era for that um that that i say that type of game i mean this is this is the game that's like blazing this new path and doing it really really well uh and uh even though i was like not playing well at all and I was just sitting there the whole time going, man, if Steve were playing this, he would be demolishing me. No, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it's like even though even though I was getting demolished, I was still having a blast with it and uh, trying to keep up with everything. And it's um, it's 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 a high tension, fast paced game um that that's that's just it's a lot of fun and we don't normally see that in groundbreaking games that are trying something new a lot of times they're not fun you know it's like that yeah this game is important but it sucks <laughs> right yeah. right right uh, no that's that's a unique uh that's a unique attribute because I, I i really feel like but i mean i mean it makes sense though i mean if this is the game that inspired you know so many other great games then right they had to do something right and it's cool because a lot of rts's and even mobas now i mean are are really fast moving and they they design i think they work towards making them really fast moving because it's better for viewership actually as well <laughs> well you say that i cannot i there's so much movement in starcraft i don't have i don't have the foggiest clue what's going but on I, I mean i mean i think it would be the i would think it would be as simple as you doing what you did for herzog yes we well, yeah, that, and that that's true because, like, uh, I, I mean, my first game on this, and I and I did put it up on Twitch. If somebody wants to watch the the, the vod on that, then <laughs> I, I, it's I like, it. I was like, I kept pausing it, going, I don't what what's going on, you know? <laughs> um, and and so there there was there's a it, it, that's one of the problems with the game, and this is I I don't want to say this is a problem with the era, um. I, you know, there, there's no in-game tutorial. Now, that's not that's definitely a product of the era. We did not do in-game tutorials back then. Right, right, right. But the le- learning curve is very steep. You know, it's like you know, you pull. I, I'm, I'm sure the StarCraft. St- the, there's a story mode, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome. Actually, it's really good. Yeah, it's, I, and it's like that with Warcraft. It's like, you know, they put you. The, the first mission they give you is like planting some, you know, plants. Yeah. And then they're like, "Oh, you succeeded! Now try to beat up somebody, you know." And um, and the first levels, you're not going to die in. They're just they're there to to teach you all the different mechanics. This right. one, I mean, the easiest map with the easiest enemy, uh, I mean, it just wiped me out so quickly. And there's there that that learning curve and, and like the manual is not a lot of help with it. it. It's it's not a very good, it's not a very well written manual, and and so the the learning curve is very very steep. Now that being said, after I'd played for about an hour, I I was starting to feel competent with it and um, and figuring out you know like what I need to do and stuff. I still lost that game, but I I it felt good. Um. And so that that is one of the problems with the game, but it can be overcome. And honestly, you know, the way we played games back in 1990, it it's it, it's like we kind of we kind of expected that we were going to suck for a few hours, you right. know. And you just kept banging your head against the wall until it made sense. This happened in a lot of games, and this was just kind of a thing um, uh, in that era of gaming. It, there was there was no hand holding. It was it was pretty abrupt. Um. Uh. One of the one of the problems is like the the air the 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 jet feels really good. Like the controls are 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 they're very smooth. They're you know like the 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 way the ship moves is very very cool. It and looks like one of those air pucks on an air hockey table. Yes. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great analogy. Yeah. It's like it. It, it moves very quickly and very naturally, and the way it takes corners and stuff is very, very cool. The mech. Oh my gosh, the mech sucks. And that's yeah. a huge problem with this game. It is so easy on the ground because there's so many, there's so many little nitpicky little obstacles that, you know, it, you end up like, I mean, there's several times that I was like, I, I was like, walking into a rock and I couldn't figure out how I couldn't move and meanwhile 
you know, the bad guys were shooting through bases and stuff. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Uh, yeah. Um, and if you are close to it, anywhere close to another sprite on that screen, you cannot transform between mech and jet. And really? when I when I say close, I mean there can be space between you and it's a game which just won't let you. And that's it's kind of crummy. It's like you can you can manipulate like some of the gameplay I, I saw. You you can manipulate that to get the uh, the enemy jet kind of kind of trapped and not able to do anything. Um, and that that seems to be how to, that seems to be how to win is just to manipulate the enemy's AI into um, into getting them stuck and obsessed with something, <laughs> which which is uh, kind of interesting. Well, but well, that's yeah. how it works in even in StarCraft with AI is like you. I think bad AI. I mean, it's just not bad AI, but it's like most AI that it's easy to figure out. I mean, and I think it's part of our human instinct. It's like easy to figure out, like what can what can I do that's going to make this AI like you know you basically like if you're getting attacked and you still have a building that's working to be completed that will produce a unit that will win you the game. A good player knows that that's happening and will go for the kill, but the AI will come into your base and you're like, ah, oh, I just need like a few more seconds to get this building complete so I can start producing this other unit that will win me the game, and so you take. You know, you take another force and you distract, you know, you basically come over here, follow me over here, right, you know, yeah. like throwing rocks at them as you're walking away, you know, so they yeah. follow you. And so, yeah, uh, and, that, and that seems to be the case here is like you can, you can figure out that the enemy AI is starting to get obsessed with a certain base on a certain map. And, right. and you just set up crazy defenses on that base and the rest of your bases are just going to be left alone. And, you know, and to, to, so you just kind of walk over to the victory, and so um, I'd be very interested to play this two-player, uh, just <laughs> to see uh, to, to, to to see how that's that's like. Um, uh, no, do we yeah, should do it. It, it seems, so you it seems a, very so you fun. You got it on Twitch. Uh, yeah, yeah, I streamed. I streamed what I had on Twitch. I mean, what how I did playing. you? Uh, how did you get it? Oh, uh, you know. Um, I have uh, an original Genesis with the original game. I just bought That's it. That's right. I forgot. No, oh, it's an emulator. No, I know. I put it on an emulator. Um, <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, so Legacy, though, is um, the, I mean, the reason we came across this game is because we were going to do this this series on RTSs, and uh, everybody kind of pointed to this game as the first real RTS. And, and what kind of distinguishes that between a real-time strategy game and a real-time tactics game which had been done before several times is okay. is that the 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 resource management and the creation of things in this case units and stuff it's 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 not that you're just moving the pieces of your army but you're creating the army on on the way um which which distinguishes it and and kind of turns the the tide of the, the the trend of this game of this game style toward um what would be coming out very very quickly after this which is dune 2 which uh did sold much better um but also kind of laid the foundation of warcraft command and Car- conquer starcraft and and so on and um these this game was listed as an influence on all of those games yeah yeah, I was seeing that, and I'm not surprised. I mean, it definitely has a lot of the. You could see, I mean, you could see it. I mean, and and that's what's so interesting about it is like you you watch this game and and being played, and it's hard not to see the influence. And so it's like if Herzog Zwei hadn't been created, would there have ever been real time strategy? <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, would it have ever have happened? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and this is—I mean, this is just this is one of those landmark occasions um, where you know somebody gets an idea that kind of tilts things in a different direction, and uh, and and creates you know creates kind of a genre, and um, you know these are uh, the, the, these are these are things that that still have an impact today. You know, it's like, I mean, that, that was the point of the original Metal Gear game. It's like, um, 
yeah, hey, instead of shooting, why don't we sneak, you know? Um, and that seems like an obvious thing, but it's obvious to us because we have so many stealth games. Right. But that wasn't ob- – I mean, that wasn't obvious right. at the time. You know? Right. Um, when, when Super Mario Brothers came out and invented – the platformer, essentially, you know, it's like this, oh, this seems so natural, but it wasn't. And, and it, and it took somebody to, to go, well, what if we do it this way? Um, and Hers XY is that game, you know, that, um, that, you know, you, it, it, it doesn't sell very well, but it lands in the hands of the right people who are looking at it going, Oh wait, this is this is something new. This is something cool. And that that spawns off, you know, Dune 2 and then Warcraft and so on and so forth down the line. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's the legacy is is uh it's it's definitely there. I mean, and I, I don't know, man, it's really exciting cuz it's exciting to see the roots of it and to see the game being played and, and to think that you know, the creators of these pillars of rts's you know we're, we're probably playing that game that's probably where it came from so right it's really cool so yeah so um herzog's why is uh it turned out to be really really fun and uh i was very glad to have run across it so um we will continue down the road of rts's a ways um <clears throat> i'd really rather not do starcraft if you don't mind that's um, fine, dude. I'm actually not a really big fan of StarCraft. <laughs> um, but uh, but before we we go, um, we are going to have a little bit of a format change, and uh, and this is, uh, you know, um, the the point the, the the point of this is is to kind of try try to try to even out the episodes a little bit where um. I, you know, I, I, I kind of felt like there, there's, there was episodes that we, do we, um, put a ton of time and planning in and episodes we didn't. And, um, yeah. and, and so uh, the, and, and, and there's also episodes that like, um, you know, I, I, we had planned a certain way and then, you know, like, uh, work got crazy for you and you couldn't make it. And so, uh, it's like, you know, having to, to, to change things on the fly or, yeah. or, uh, or, or shift gears and do it, you know, do something different and stuff like that. And we want to kind of even that out where, um, all of our episodes are going to get, uh, get the attention that we want them to have. And so to that end, we're actually going to be doing two separate things. The, the first one is kind of, kind of the main show. And that's what this, that's what this is, uh, this episode is. And we're going to be covering a topic and, um, we're going to have the same kind of fun that we normally have and, uh, probably take some calls along the way, probably have some, uh, some news and that sort of thing. And those are going to be every other week. And then the weeks in between, we're going to have, uh, smaller, more stripped down episodes that are going to tie into the, the, the main show topic. So next week we are going to be tackling the music from, uh, from Herzog's Zwei. And, uh, cause it, the soundtrack is fantastic. Um, and so we're going to, yeah, co- we're going to cover that. It's, oh gosh, it's so cool. Um, but it's going to, it's going to be more of, you know, more of a, just a straightforward, you know, uh, show, uh, that we're, we're confident and committed to still making fun and good. It's just going to be, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a different format. Does that make sense? Did right. I make sense in all of that? No, it, it, it does. It's, it's going to be like, um, like if you eat chocolate cake one day and the next day you don't eat chocolate cake, but you still want chocolate, you might open your box of chocolates and just take a chocolate out. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Um, and so, uh, you know, well, the, this sprang out of a conversation that we had that like, like we felt like, um, we were, uh, we, we weren't, we weren't putting the, the time in research in playing these games that we wanted to. And so 
it, it felt like that each uh, that each episode was not as as fully uh, you know looked into research whatever uh, as as <laughs> uh, as it should have been and so this was a kind of a way to to solve that while still getting still getting episodes out every week um, because this is uh, this is something I did I, I didn't want to to turn it into every other week uh, show um, I, I have a lot of fun doing this and I know uh, Stephen you do too yes and so. Yeah, and so we, uh, so we're going to be much more consistent. Um, the plan right now is to, on the, on the big, uh, the, on the big shows to expect Steven every week, every time, not every week, every time. And, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, I don't want to call them smaller shows because they probably still will be very long, <laughs> but <laughs> the off week shows, um, will, will mostly be, be me talking about uh talking about music playing some you know some songs from the thing or talking about some aspect of the game that that I thought that I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, no. That'll be awesome, dude. And I'll I'll look forward to to catching, you know, to listening in on those episodes if I can't make it. And if I can, you know, a bonus. <laughs> bonus. Bonus. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, uh with that, we do appreciate you listening in. Um if uh if if you do enjoy the show, uh please do consider supporting us on pa- uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash technofunkboy. Uh that is one of the the goals goals for the year is that um we are uh we're specifically trying to hit uh thirty dollars a month. Which uh which isn't ridiculous. It's like uh, you know, if uh, I mean if if half of you, you know, pl- started doing the the bottom tier of one dollar you know that would easily cover that that amount um but uh thirty thirty dollars a month that c- covers all of our costs related to the show and so it allows us to uh, uh at, at very least break even as um as we produce the show and so please do consider that that helps us out a lot if uh if you um if if you're enjoying the show and you just can't swing that that's totally cool uh we totally understand that and um uh you could help us out a lot by rating and reviewing us on itunes or whatever podcast catcher you use uh or uh or sharing the episode on on social media to let your friends know that that this is uh you know you enjoy listening to the podcast and that uh they should they would enjoy it as well yeah spread the word yeah so uh with that we will sign off and we will see you next time Retro News Super Show is brought to you by the Techno Punk Boy. Follow us on Twitter at Techno Punk Boy, on Facebook at the Techno Punk Boy, and sign up for our email list at technofunkboy.com. Also look for us on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon for music. If you are so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast catcher. If you are not so inclined, you are obviously some sort of villain trying to conquer the world. Unowned music and new playlists are used for educational and critical purposes. Thank you for listening. Keep gaming. Unless you have responsibilities that need to be done at this time, then you can gain later.